Hello and welcome to uh, another video for Comp 3218 Game Design and Development here at the University of Southampton. This is uh, one of our coursework videos for the third uh, third instalment of our courseworks. Uh, I am Tom Blount, I lecture on the course, and I am joined here today with Callum Smallforth and Adrian Chapman, another lecturer. Uh, Callum, could you tell us a little bit about what we asked the students to do for this coursework? Yes, so we made them make a small game prototype using one of three innovations. There is procedural generation of content. They may use an innovative hardware interface such as virtual reality or augmented reality, or they could design a game with a location aware element. Excellent. So let's uh, kick off. Our first game is Random Drive. I wonder who will be randomly driving. It looks like you. <laughs> you're, in, you're in the driving seat. Ooh, there's oh, right. sound. About. Should we read the about? Is it, yeah, it says read me, so we better. This is a. <laughs> I know this one. This is a racing game where the track is generated as you go. Space to drift. Oh, so we've got two players. So, Adrian, it looks like. Oh, boy. Great. Space to drift. We've got WASD or uh, Space to Drift and F to Respawn. A46 and, and Numpad. Numpad to drift. Enter to drift and plus to respawn. Got it. I'm slightly concerned that respawning is a thing. That's All right, was... you've got to show the keyboard. Right. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll count you off. Three, two. Oh, I've already left. Oh, no, you... All right, fine. Go. Right. Wait, which one I? On the right, on the bottom. Okay, I got it. Whoops. So, just for science. Hey. For science. <laughs> for science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, respawn, sorry. Uh, hey, you started ahead of me. Yeah, well, I, it wasn't my fault. Okay. Would you? <laughs> this was inevitable, really, wasn't it? It was. All right, so let's go left. I want to go, no, no. no. The yeah. second person you missed them all. I no, think. the second person gets to choose. Oh, okay. That's by design. What did you choose? No, you, I'm first, you're no. second. Wait, what? I chose left, and we didn't go left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I am Wait, already... Which, ways, which, ways, which way are we I going? I don't know, I'm lost. Going for the green one, I think, yeah. Oh, um, so I so found the track okay. generation bug there. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame. You're going the wrong way, Age. Am I? Oh, well. This is actually what I love to do in Mario Kart. It annoys <laughs> right. the children. Sorry, Let's I'm turning. Down. I'm turning, down I'm turning, sounds I'm turning. Good. Turning. Wait, what? I think you get to pick one. Also, that's okay. Yeah, that's uh -huh. definitely broken. Okay, I I got this. Aha! Uh -huh. Good luck making that oh, jump. Whoops! Why am I spawning the wrong way? It's yeah. so. What happens if I, as the first player, reach the end of the track before the second player gets to the? I think it just generates. Am I still going the right. wrong way? I'm, yeah. I'm... I hit space to drift. <laughs> you, you won. Oh, I won? I think you might have won. As, as I was still so, going in circles. So, so information design is a bit problematic. A little bit. So we've got green, red, and yellow checkpoints. What do any of those colors mean? I don't know. So the end one Maybe was... Maybe it's green is if you if what I'm aiming for in yellow is... Like the next one? The but next what, one? What's red? Does red mean one of you's already got it? Ah, drifting! So I got up there. I believe that means that I can choose to go up, but I don't seem to be going up. Oh god, that's not up! Drift. That is very- I'm trying to drift, that just slides off the track. Oh no, it does go up afterwards. Haha! Uh -huh. Okay. But I'm not sure how that- Alright. Wait, sure wait, that wait, means. I'm turning! So if I choose to go... down. Wait, am I going the wrong way again? Uh, no, I don't think so. You, you are in for the green one. Hang on, so if I, I chose down, does that mean I can now go down? Wait, yeah, it goes down there. Oh god, oh god, oh god! But, see, I don't think picking any of those boxes is super meaningful, right? Because it's not... I mean, not that I can tell... This is... Sure, like the left and right, maybe as the second player you get to sort of get those and then you know whether you're going to go left or right, but up and down, yeah. what impact does that have? Uh, well, I'm spinning out of control! Okay, just going to say this now, you probably didn't have to put up and down in this, guys. Yeah. It's probably making things... Oh, Okay, drifting just sends me off the track! You're making me wiggle! 
I think that's whatever they're using for the track generation. Oh, I'm uh, getting seasick. <laughs> so I don't know why you drift, because it basically just spins you off the track. It's nice that you can see like the weird haphazard map is generated. So map. anything I'm choosing though isn't happening to me, right? I mean, I think it it might be happening ahead. Oh, but, way ahead. I see. Yeah. So drifting just seems to disable physics on the wheels. Oh, oh going to take no, the lead? No, 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 she's not. That's yeah. right. And then you put this weird overlapping sort of. Aha! Uh -huh. But you didn't expect us to go. Ah! Uh, right. right. So the track is sort of generating over Whoa. itself. You're not going to make that turn. That was. Oh. Okay, you are going to make that turn. Aha! Uh -huh. But now you're. Oops. Yay! Okay. okay. Okay, so there is a bit of a fanfare at the end. Hooray! We'll have the first time then, but. So, um, let's go right. through our criteria while we continue to right. play. Uh, so, kicking off with presentation. Uh. Skybox is a bit bland, but you know, uh, the, I guess the focus is all about the track. But then, I mean, in terms of presentation, there's not a lot going on other than hey! the, the track randomly appearing. Even, like, it'd be almost nice if you had slightly different coloured trucks, like one of you was red and one of you was yellow or something. Yeah. Information design wise, I'm also not really sure about the checkpoint. So, red is ones that you've both been through, or one that you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no! So, hang on. Before yeah. Before you crash Sorry. into each other, I want to see if. Um, so, if you go through this red one car, uh, the green one car, and AG sit there, I want to see if it changes I, on both screens. Oh. No, it doesn't. Okay. So, red is one you've already been through. Green is okay. the one you're aiming for, and yellow is the next one. Okay, that makes sense. We shouldn't really be having to deduce this, I think, though. Eh. Oh God! What the? Wow. Sweet air, dude. Oh god. Woo! It's Rainbow Road all over again. God, look at that twist. You're like, you've got non Euclidean roads at this point. What? Where am I supposed to be going? Am I supposed to be going over so, there? So, I think their track generation may have bugged out a little here. Just a little. I'm... I hit space and that. So, if I sometimes if I try to drift, it will just end the game. Why do you keep trying to drift when you say it doesn't? Do it doesn't work. Yes, it does. It definitely does stuff, but it's just not helpful. Okay. So, uh, information design. Uh, All right. There's some a, things. It took us a little bit of time to figure out, but the information design of having you know, red ones that you've passed, green that you're aiming for, and yellow to you know where the next one yep. will be. That's good. Um, it's not super. Oh, wow, that's a lot of checkpoints all in a row. It's fun. That's a bumpy road as well. The the boxes where you can sort of pick up like different tracks. Again, it's not obvious what effect they're having, but they are relatively clearly labelled. Yeah, it's not. So there's one sort of stuck in. There. You can push me. It's fine. <laughs> you are pushing um, me. I think I'm gonna push are you. I'll push you. I'll push, push you onto the track. Long live the king. <laughs> Are you pushing forward? No, I'm not doing anything. You're stuck. Ram it! <laughs> Long live the king! Oh god! Um, right. Yes. yes. So what do we think of the... So the information design definitely problematic in terms of both not, the boxes not getting, yeah, not getting and... Any feedback of... And even just how many waypoints are left to go on the map. Yep. Yeah, I guess it's not essential, but it would be bloody nice. I'm also that. very stuck here. I don't know about you. you Visually, what do we think? Uh, I mean... Well, okay. visually, visually, there's not a lot going on. There's track and cars. Ah, and something has happened. I can't even see myself. Respawn with plus. But I'm on something. There we go. Uh, okay. It's interesting, isn't it? So, yes. I'm, so I'm on something and I'm... Cons are the graphics consistent? Uh, the graphics are consistent, but I, I think there's actually a lot of bugs in here. Well, I would. Bug, bugs come Yeah, I know. Bugs come oh, yeah. So, alright. Satisfactory review. Key information is shown. Consistent graphics. Oh. Some audio effects or music. Mm. There's actually reasonable audio. It, yeah, it is. It you know, is. You've got the nice little motor running. You've got the satisfying crash where you keep trying to run each other off the road. That's right. Yeah, so the audio design is pretty nice. The graphics are, like you say, perhaps a little uh, bare bones. Oops. Yeah, just I mean, they're consistently bare bones, but it would be nice if there was like slightly more to it than just racing through an empty skybox. Yes. Hang on, I think I have got a 
Masterful trick up my sleeve, huh? Nope. Jump. Um, so are we at satisfactory on information design, I think? I think so. Key information is shown. Well, some key information is shown. So it tells you where you where you need to go next. Oh, God, no. And I guess that's the absolutely critical information you need to show, but not really. It's, I think it's probably fair to say key information is shown, but it's not clear yeah. at all. Um, so maybe so that path, is just a, a path, for example, would be some attempt at information design, oh, consistent oh, oh. but poorly chosen graphics and some poorly chosen. Audio. I think it's it's better than that, but not necessarily by a whole heap. It might be in the middle of path and satisfactory. Yeah, I think that I think that's probably fair. All right, so we move on to uh, talking about the gameplay. Uh, so you, were the, you two are the two playing? Uh, yes. Tell, tell me about the gameplay. Is it good? So, well, I'm... <laughs> it's fun, but I can't work out if it's supposed to be. I, yeah. I it's supposed to be. <laughs> Is it supposed to be? I, I'm actually mm -hmm. finding it a little bit frustrating, although I think that might be some of the control. Oh. Um, I think partly, like, again, we'll get on to this later, but yes, I know, that's the effect of... No, I was going to say the procedural generation as well. Well, that's that's later. So we we haven't. Um... So so what are our mechanics? We can so mechanics... go to waypoints. Yay! You can drive. You can create the next set of. You basically set the next set of track by being. Is that what's happening? The Cause... first. Oh, there we go. We can set track length and track course. Okay, so it's nice that they've added some of this into the scene. Generate checkpoints. Why do you don't generate checkpoints? Then I should oh, you get in a minute after I've messed yeah. with every other setting that they have. Do I have to save those? No. Right. Does that change the width? So the... I didn't change width. Oh. Okay. So you drive. The mechanics are you drive. You go through waypoints. Choose... Yeah, you go through waypoints. And, and what is that? I may have turned the comp track complexity up too high. It's just looping all over the place. Oh god. On the one hand, I'm very happy they included that as an option. On the other hand, maybe should have limited it to things that don't break the game. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. got like you've got layered, you've got like a double layer of track, and you're sandwiched between the two. It's like being in a cake. <laughs> you're a delicious. One. Um, okay. So gameplay wise, I mean, you can race. So you like can race. Yeah. yeah. So what you can we? crash. That's a mechanic. Let's go with satisfactory. Is uh, where are we? Set mechanics, usable controls, meaningful play. Uh. How how are the controls feel? Do they feel usable? I mean, no. The, the controls are the controls are things. no. I actually think we're slightly less than satisfactory at this point. It's, so a pass would be fewer inconsistent mechanics, challenging controls, leading to limited meaningful play. It's very challenging yeah, controls. I think, I think that the pass. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look like you're sort of you know sort of like head to head and neck. Turn this turn this back down. Kill. Uh... <laughs> right, you're sort of throwing yourselves at the next checkpoint. That's yes. Kind of it. So it's down to like fifty or something. Did you want to call it a pass or? Yeah, I think we're a pass on that. Alright, so next one is bugs. Now this is interesting because we're going to talk about the procedure, like the technical... Procedural generation itself, but then just bugs in terms of... So, so there's going to be a tiny bit of overlap here because things like sort of, you know, being catapulted into the sky when you hit, like... Yeah. But overall, like the game itself doesn't seem to be that other than... So we did get a couple of things where it sort of just crashed as, like, to the, to the menu, right? Uh, yes, we have had a couple of cases of accidentally going to the menu. Um, what other bugs have we had? See, we've so had a lot a of those pickups bugging out. Actually, this is a yeah. bug, I actually think. So there's they've generated a track that you cannot get up. But I, that's the problem with the procedural generation. However, I would describe... You, you know like the sort of um, ridging that happens on the track? Yeah. I would say that's probably a, probably a bug rather than a procedural generation issue. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, okay, should we, should we so a, pa a pass for bugs would be a simple game, or the game is playable, uh, but there are serious frequent, frequent serious bugs. I think it might be a bit better than that. I think it's a little bit better than that. I, I think, think like the complexity of what they're trying to do. I think the complexity is actually pretty high. Yeah. Like, well, the game itself is quite simple. It's yeah. race along a track, get checkpoints. It's complicated by the procedural generation. Exactly. It, it, it might be. I think it might be satisfactory just because we are definitely getting bugs that prevent us getting to the end of the game. Yeah. yeah. Some really frequent serious bugs and or frequent minor bugs. And I think those pickups not working are probably frequent minor. So. Yeah. 
Honestly, again, given like the simplicity of the game itself, Ooh, I, I might read. say between pass and satisfactory. There's not uh, a huge amount of mechanics. On. No, there's not. That's true, actually. It's, it's yeah. between pass and satisfactory, yeah. Alright, uh, so the brief. Um, so yeah, procedural generation and how well it's implemented. Um, let's have a look at what they said about how they've implemented it. So if I bring up their game notes. Oh god, oh god. Uh, the game procedure generates the next section as a track's direction, turns and meshes using a very complicated system of manipulating Bezier curves. Uh, I, can, I can tell it's complicated. Uh, the first point is set to the last point of the track, the second point is set parallel to the vector between the second oh god. points of. Okay. First, it checks the generated point's angle so that if the angle is too severe, like a complete U turn. It defines a max angle and tries to generate another point. I feel like we've had some extremely we, I, we have had 180 degree vertical turns. Yeah. Yeah. So I've also respawned now in a place that I can't get out of. <laughs> uh, get me out of that. The elevation is determined beforehand using a combination of Gaussian okay. distribution and sigmoid function. Oh, come uh, on. Decent balance between flats and ramps, and the course won't go towards extremes of either. Again, I, I am not entirely convinced that's the case. And you get. Here. Things like this where the track isn't quite doing its offset. Um, yeah. Uh, all of the procedural generations customizable in the options menu. So that, that, there is that, which is kind of they, they they set the options, which is and it does actively change it. We can tell a difference. Uh, you can also choose not to. Generate <laughs> Thank you. So they they make a point that you don't yeah. have to generate <laughs> checkpoints, but I don't see why you do that because <laughs> otherwise, what's the point of the game? Yeah. Um, all right, so if we go back to the mark scheme. Um, so the problem, is, the problem with this is interesting, is they've got a very, very complex system. It just doesn't seem to work very well. Yes. So, if we, so for example, uh, a pass would be simple procedural generation that in the majority of cases allows play. Satisfactory would be straightforward procedural generation that incorporates some effective rules. Good would be appropriate procedural generation that incorporates effective rules. And the problem is, they've definitely got all of these rules in there. But it's just, just not done well enough. Yeah, yeah. there's not enough validation or something like that to sort of ensure that the tracks are driving. It's playable. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's just a, I don't know if that's a pass actually then, or if we I, because it's simple because it, it's it's complex procedural generation. You're right, but the the bit I'm looking at under the pass is that it allows a majority of cases allows play. And we definitely have some cases where it doesn't allow us to actually play. That's some cases. So, for example, like now, most of, every t most times it generates the next bit of track, you can play. Occasionally, it will do. Whoa! Oh. I don't know how I did that. Sorry, I pushed a button. All right, oh. we're playing in a slightly different form of split screen now. Interesting. Okay. So, think, yeah. So, most times that it generates the next section of track, it is playable, and it seems to work. It's just the problem is when it doesn't. It's very obvious that it doesn't. Am I going the wrong way? You're going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So that's so, so almost an interesting point. The fact that those labels on the on the pickups spin round makes it a little bit difficult to tell which direction yeah. you're going. If they always faced you know the correct way yeah. for the track, that'd probably be better. Um, but back to the procedure generation. So, would you like to put this between a pass and a satisfactory? Given like given the complexity, I think it's between a pass. And a hey, I actually won one. Hey, <laughs> it's totally between a pass and a satisfactory. Look yes, at we'll be generous. I won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it might, even, it might even hit the satisfactory. Really. I mean, it is pretty complex what they're trying to do. So the satisfactory will be straightforward procedural generation, and it's definitely not that. There's definitely a complex system. It's very complex. It's Give them a satisfactory. They right. they lose though because it's not. It's just not well right, validated. When it, yeah. when it when it doesn't work, it's very obvious that it's not working. Exactly. Um, but if we go on to the the design decision behind it, so sort of looking at would this game sort of work without innovation and things like that. So I actually think that they did a re like it is a sophisticated design. I or possibly an effective design. It's it's up in the uh, it's outside of pass at this point. It's up higher in the. Uh, so, so I like that. Uh, so we asked them why they chose this innovation, and yeah. answer number one is the obvious replayability, uh, which it always of is. At least they know that's the obvious answer. Uh, but they also talked about balancing out um, competitive experiences. So you can't have you know 
one person that's memorised all the tracks and mm-hmm. then has their friend over and they've wiped the floor with them. Because, and that's a reasonable case for it. Yeah. Like, it's interesting that, I think it's kind of interesting that, so we've seen games like this in past years that generate the entire track. Yes, and then, and, let you and then let you play. And it's actually, it's more fun to generate the track as you go. It really is. So, it's yeah, an interesting mechanic. Okay, including the, so for example, the pickups that let you change the thing. Honestly, I don't think it affects the gameplay. No. But in terms of design-wise, you couldn't do that if you weren't generating the track as you went along. Absolutely. So there's this idea that the like, whoever's in second place can change the outlook of the track to give themselves some advantage. Yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it actually does give them much advantage, but it's a nice idea, and without the procedural generation, you couldn't, you couldn't do, do it. So yeah. yeah, so I think we're we're up in, in terms of the question becomes: Is it effective, or is it um, uh, right. uh, sophisticated? So is it good? Or I think, or is it slightly higher than good? So good is effective design takes effective advantage of the innovation, where the innovation adds to the gameplay and limitations are minimized. I'm not sure it's that good. No, you're right. I think, it's, I think it might hit. I think it might hit good. I don't think it hits excellent because of the limitations are. It's the limitations. It has some fairly severe limitations in its current implementation. Yeah, so that's, but that's actually the thing, bugs the design itself. itself. It's the design. But even then, the other aspect is it adds advantage. Uh, there is advantage to the innovation that's incorporated into the gameplay, and on the one hand, I think it kind of has that with the lack with the lack of foreknowledge as to what the track will be doing. Things like the pickups are a nice idea, but in their current form, they just don't do anything. And so it does add some. That's the, like they definitely designed their game around it. So the fact that they've incorporated those pickups, so the second player in theory has an advantage because they've got more foreknowledge of what the rest of the track is going to be. That's definitely them sort of saying, okay, we're designed with. Sure, this is going to be replayable, but it's also going to be a core mechanic of this game. So I think they get credit for actually designing with that in mind. Mm-hmm. You're right; it'd be nicer if, like, the implementation of the procedural generation worked a bit better. But I would say, so, all right, if so, uh, satisfactory would be very straightforward design that, in, in a small way, takes advantage of the innovation. I don't think we're there. Uh, I think I, we're I, good. At least Make, the, I what, think what we're, we're good. halfway between. Uh, so I think, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from. I do think, though, it's effectively kind of mixing up the difference between the playability, just the bugs, and it's kind of painful uh, because of how they've implemented it and how they've designed it. And I actually think that the design is is using that procedural generation in a in an interesting way. They're not generating the track ahead of time. That's they a, are... They certainly, they, there's certainly room for improvement. They could have yeah. taken this further if they really wanted mm-hmm. to get the accident. But I, th- I think they get a good for this. Okay. So I'm, going to, I'm going to put my foot down. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, feedback. Feedback. Switch between this again. Uh, feedback and response. So we were told to think about where the fun in the game lies. So we learned hard. So we leaned hard on the randomized element, which increases the crazy and unexpected nature of the game, keeping players on their toes. It draws a lot on the competition dynamic, which we balance with track control of the person behind. We were suggested to have a stronger idea of the mechanics and the purpose, so we built the whole game around the procedural generation and the second place players control over the map. Uh, enhancing the random nature of the track to build the uniqueness we were told to consider, and our mechanic of controlling the track is the biggest element of what's said so far. I think they, they hit all those feedback pieces. So they're, they're definitely taking what we said on board. It'd be nice to sort of, yeah, if they expanded on it a little, but that you can obviously see that they've taken it, like, taken it to heart that they need to really make the procedural generation the focus of the, the game. reason that you're doing this game. It's not just a, an infinitely playable track. So, if I get back to the mark scheme, we've got... So, feedback was articulated, reasonable changes have been made with some success, or clearly articulated, appropriate and effective changes? Uh, no, I think we're the articulated and reasonable changes were made. Okay. Um, so going back to the whole, it's nice that they've sort of really incorporated that, but to, to they implemented some more things that sort of showed the feedback of player two changing the track. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I love that, but then that puts them uh, I believe that's a good. I believe that's a satisfactory. Oh. Nope, nope, sorry. No, that's a good. No, no, that's a good. Okay, excellent. Uh, okay. Shall All right, kill on? this game and move right. on to the next. So this game is called uh, Cherry Dash, I think. Uh, yes. I'll tell you it's made with Unity. Okay. So Cherry Dash. 
Alright. So tutorial. Go, oh, that's, oh, that's like low contrast, that is. That they remember their tutorials. Click, oh, no. click once to throw the ball all the way to the wall. Try to collect all the fruits on the... So this is what we talk about when we say tutorial level. Like, that means nothing. No, nope, that's this, the tutorial. Oh, okay. this, this is the tutorial level, and I already understand what the clicking was referring to. Wait, that was clicking? Is it clicking, didn't it? Click once to throw the ball all the way to the wall. I think that means press the button once. Oh, right. Oh, it's one of the IC. There we go, yes. No, wrong way. It's getting a little bit stuck every so often. All right, so this seems to be working just fine. Okay, so it's a nice simple little puzzle game. I, I think we've seen probably all of the mechanics yep. there are to see. Probably. Um, so let's just get stuck in with the with, with the, the market. Sure. Firstly, just a, I want to say a props for trying to make a procedural puzzle game. That's genuinely quite difficult, or can be. You don't seem kind of puzzled. Yeah, what have I done wrong here? Up, go up then right. Oh, sorry, never mind. I can't, I can't go up then right. Uh, all right, back to the start. So this does kind of highlight an interesting thing with the design ship. They always start you at the side on one of these blocks. So if you ever get stuck, it's always possible to get back to the start, which is a nice touch. Am I missing something here? Um, oh, uh, go left, then go down. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> there. Yeah, there. Oh, like that, then that, yeah, then that, and then. Hmm. Huh. Did they just generate something that's unsolvable? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't is know it, if I'm just bad at the puzzle or if it's unsolvable. I want to say comment below, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, so look at the pickle thing, right? The only way to get that. No, you'd have to get down to the box to the left got, of the cherry. It's got to be the there, yeah. down there. Yeah, I want to be on the strawberry, right? I'm not sure this is solvable. Yeah, it does look like it's not. Hmm. Well, this is regenerate. I kind can, of want to just double, triple check that this yeah, is unsolvable first, because before we comment on how they're generating unsolvable puzzles. Absolutely. So there's only two ways we can start this game, right? Which is there, there. Ah, that's that's unsolvable. I think. Or oh, I'm bad at it. Can't see it. Hmm. Alright, well, you we'll puzzle over that for yes. a before you before you uh, hit regenerate. Um, yeah. we'll, so we'll let's talk, talk about, about the, presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, overall, like, it's nice. Yeah. Like, again, simple yeah. graphics, but relatively consistent. I'm not sure why we're you know rolling on ice or collecting fruit or something like that yeah yeah and we could have we could have done penguins on ice or yep yeah. yeah like if it was you know a penguin sliding over the ice and they were collecting different kinds of fish or something it might be a little bit more consistent but i'm sort of nitpicking a bit absolutely like what's uh, what's there is fine yeah there's a score i didn't actually watch we're on the fifth we are on the fifth puzzle for score 19. I didn't count how many fruit we've gotten to before this, so maybe right. it's per fruit. Yeah, I think we got point per fruit. Okay. I think that was unsolvable. Uh, no. Uh, score is not this one, going up this one's, all. this one's fine. Okay, so we just went up from 19 to 22 on one puzzle that had five fruits. So there's so something... I think each puzzle has a difficulty rating. And Could we be. get a number of points equal to the difficulty rating. Okay. But, again, that's not super clear. Yeah, up and down. Up and down, yeah. Oh, oh I see, yeah. Um, okay, so, so yeah. yeah. They've got some little, um, what are they called? Uh, audio effects when you sort of bump into things yeah. while you're sliding across. 
It'd be nice if maybe there was some background music as well. But yeah. Um, so let's see. Key information is shown. Consistent graphics. Some audio effects or music. Or key information is shown clearly, and the graphics are consistent, and there's an appropriate use of audio effects or music. Um, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, way too long. Yeah. Mechanics wise, um, Again, it's, it's a very simple set of mechanics, but yeah, you bounce around, you bump into things, you pick up fruit. And that's it. With, it's interesting because we've seen games in this sort of um, series of videos that have, again, sort of a very simple set of mechanics, mm -hmm. but are limited on sort of choice and meaningful play. Whereas in this, you're sitting there and you're actually sort of puzzling out what you're going to do and yeah. how it's going to affect your next move. So although the set of mechanics are simple, it does lead to like some interesting gameplay. Absolutely. Have I messed this up? Oh, no. Yeah, that one, but then I've somehow messed this up, haven't I? Let's try to get it. All the path is just very convoluted. Hmm. So, this is actually yeah. meaning to meaningful play. Um, as long as it's solvable, it's meaningful play. Agreed. So, the question is if we hit a couple that are unsolvable. So, I think it's complementary mechanics. Uh, I think it's I think it's again in the good category. Um, smooth, usable controls that leads to meaningful play. I I maybe say sort of knock it down between satisfactory and good because there are there's not a lot in the way of mechanics. I think I am bumping it up because it's I I'm enjoying the meaningful play in this one. Okay. Yeah. So. I would comment on difficulty, I think, in this. I don't know if that comes under procedural generation or not, but certainly some of them have been challenging. I think in a lot of cases it is very, very just intuitive where to go. Yeah. I think... And then sometimes it's just not. Yeah, so I don't know if that's a procedural generation issue with them balancing the difficulty correctly, or if that right. sort of counts towards meaningful play in the puzzle game. It's elements of both. So some of them... Do seem very easy because because of the layout of the fruits, they almost sort of lead you through. Okay, go here now, go here. Yes. Go here. This one, yeah. I, it's, it's really hard to tell if we're just being that's it, so dumb or if this is genuinely. So we need to get there, which means we need to get there, which means something has to stop us either there or there, and there's not. Hmm. Yeah. This one looks like it's not solvable. Yeah. In which case, the ones that we've actually been puzzling over the most are the non-solvable ones. Which... Could be, yeah. Yeah. Which I think would detract a little bit from the meaningful play, though. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, well, I messed that up one way or another. In which case, should we say like it, it sits between satisfactory and good for now? Yes. Yeah. We might we might come back and look at that in a minute. Uh, bugs. So purely mechanically, I've not noticed any bugs. No, me neither. Very oh. occasionally, the ball gets stuck against a wall. Oh. When you say stuck, as in like it sort of Mul clips into multi move, multiple key presses to get it to move again. That's okay. so it's minor, but it is there. Okay. Right, so it's also would be, fairly simple too. So satisfactory would be infrequent serious bugs and or frequent minor bugs. Right. And so if it's got that sort of mm -hmm. small bug and also it's a very very simple game, there's not a lot for it yep. to go wrong. Yep. It's satisfactory. So procedural generation wise, um, let's have a look at what they uh, what they said about how they generate this route. Uh, this one, there we go. Uh, procedural generation is used to generate the levels uh, by creating paths, walls, and pickups. The algorithm uses multi-dimensional arrays to determine the position of the relevant data, uh, hold values of whether it's a tile, a wall, the start position, or uh, so on. The algorithm creates the array, setting the size to one. And Okay, but how does it work? Inside the loop, the algorithm calculates available distances and picks a random one. Then it calculates the length of the path, which has been randomly chosen, between one and the maximum distance possible. Then checks if the given path length is creatable. If it's creatable, it creates the path and does nothing otherwise. 
we start to carry on until all paths are created, and then it adds pickups to the path type. So that's interesting, and the pickups are random. So this actually is saying there's actually not a lot of validation here. We really may be grabbing. I can't see a way of doing this. Yeah. So from what I gather, it tries to create a path. So it creates a path for yeah. you to go through, and then adds fruit randomly to the path. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks like if the path like crosses over itself, that might be where we get in situations like mm -hmm. this because it doesn't explicitly say how how it validates these paths. Exactly. Okay, so if we go to not this one, this one. Yeah, this looks like an unsolvable one to me. I, I think so too. To... Um, Let's see if we get another one. So straightforward procedural generation that incorporates some effective rules that enable meaningful play, or simple procedural generation that in the majority of places allows play. I think I think it's probably that. It's simple. Yeah. So that would, uh, that would put it it's out of pass. pass. Yeah. Because yeah, in the majority of cases it does give you a playable level, but there are definitely some that cause you to get stuck. Uh, and next design. So how how useful is it to have this sort of procedurally generated puzzle? Well, we're back to the uh, playability or replayability. <laughs> uh, the aim of the game is to collect fruit by eight oh, or of generation that? levels are generated randomly, which makes it uh, possible to play endlessly without repetitive levels. Okay. Yeah. The old replay the Wicked Chestnut. Yeah. As the player progresses, they gain score, which is directly proportional to the difficulty of the game. The amount of points the player gains on each level changes depending on the moves that the player made, and the dimensions of the next generated board are, t are determined according to the score. The higher the score, the bigger the board. Okay, they, they are getting bigger. I'll give them that. Uh... So... It might almost be worth going back to the technical implementation that they've done and just bump it up a notch because they mm -hmm. are trying to model, they are trying to put in something that increases the difficulty of it. It's not hugely complex, but just by increasing the size of the, size of the board as they go on, mm -hmm. I'm inclined to bump them up to just above a pass. I think that's just fair. So I started over there, didn't I? Um, as far as meaningfulness goes, though, so. So they don't super articulate why they've decided that this game should be procedural, other than replayability. So, uh, what are your thoughts? So, it's always nice to have more of a genuinely challenging puzzle game. That is, that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Though, Generally, I would say that rather than that actually being score based, that comes from the motivation that comes from the desiring to, to beat the the highest possible challenge that stumps you. Mm -hmm. So I think to some extent this comes down to difficulty here. I think. Um, I th so part of it, I think, comes down to so reading from their notes, the way they've implemented this is they create a path, and then as far as I can tell, that's it. If mm -hmm. so, basically the gameplay in this is: can you find the path that the algorithm made? There's, it, there doesn't even seem to be much in the way of like double bluffs or red herrings or anything like that. It, it certainly is very simple, mm -hmm. um, and it, it does get more complex the more things they add to the level. But you're right; it's quintessentially the same experience um, again and again. And if you were increasingly coming up with techniques to solve it mm -hmm. and different approaches to solving the problem. Yep. Then I think it definitely could be an interesting, an interesting mechanism, but I'm not sure that's there. So, do you, so in its current state, do you think this design takes advantage of procedural generation? Well, I think it's a perfectly satisfactory, straightforward design. That, that yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think it, it does take advantage of it, but again, the, yep. they could have done more with it. Yep. Okay, and lastly, looking at the feedback. So, in every design lab, we gave students some feedback, and we asked them to respond to it. Uh, Are we in the right one? Yep, I just reused one of the templates so we're talking about the narrative structure of the game. Ah. Uh, in the labs, we were unsure about how procedural generation would impact the game. We planned to have the auto-generation of maps, but did not think about a way to make a simple impact gameplay. Fair enough. 
feedback received helped us come up with ideas. So what feedback was that? Uh, find a way to impact the gameplay or using the generation. We decided to keep track of the score and increase the score depending on the moves that the player made at that level. We assigned... Okay, so that's not clear in the information design of this. No. Uh, we designed to increase the dimension of the levels depending on the score, which enables higher skilled players to reach harder levels faster and increase the difficulty slower for players that struggle. So they have sort of, particularly with the adaptive elements, they, yeah, they're trying to be adaptive that. as well. The trick is, I guess, sort of the, they haven't necessarily thought about how the, the gameplay within each level is affected by the procedural generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but they have definitely taken that feedback on board and sort of try to incorporate it. So, feedback was articulated. Some changes have been attempted with partial success. Yeah. 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 So that puts them at a satisfactory for that as well. I get the feeling we've got another impossible level here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I so it's, I call it it's, <laughs> yeah. it's time to close this one and the other. Oh, is this the screamy one? This is the screamy one. Oh Good. no! Enjoy. All right. Uh, so, so, so can, this, can we apologize to anyone watching this in advance? Yeah, if, if you are wearing headphones while watching this, maybe turn it down. Another, yes. There may be some. Uh, you, you that is to, that is not this, ideal, is it? Do you want to maximize this on play while we? So this game is driven by sound. So the. So it's a sort of physics-based platformer where you have to scream at boxes to move them. Does the slice the bar turns red when you shout, but remains green when talking normally? So... Uh, okay, so... Uh, okay, that was... Wow, that's a shame. That's, that was, that's impressive. Maybe, maybe adjust the slide a little bit, so we have to scream scream at the nice people on YouTube less. La... Ah... Ah... Uh, okay, so just you guys. Okay, so just talking is enough to trigger it now. So let's just turn that's, it down a bit. That's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. That's fine. And then you have to shout, and it goes. Okay, I think I think this is okay if I talk softly. Okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter if talking makes it go. Oh, there we go. Solve the puzzles to turn the. Oh God, please stick. View the frame rate, please. Okay, so, we're good. Here we go. So you can go and. So I need to just yeah, talk yeah. loudly at the object. Ah! <laughs> oh God! Okay. One more. One more roll. Oh no! Oh. So <laughs> is it? Is it? Oh god! I'm in the hole. Oh, well done. Oh, good job. So I think I think um, one of the things that they said in the, in I the can't expo to restart. was that there's a sampling there's a sampling rate. So if you if you make a quick noise and it's it, you can go between the samples. Okay. So you have to make a loud constant drone, and that will that will do the job. Let's fly a drone so next to the mic. Just like my lectures. <laughs> Hey! I'm pretty sure they create this game just to laugh at us shouting. This is a little bit dark. To be honest, I don't blame them for doing that. This looks a bit strange. It doesn't look right to me. Yeah, I th so the lighting is slightly off, but I think we can we can probably make do without going into the editor and playing around. So we need to. So that one has to go that way. So here's a crazy idea. What if I just push them? I don't think they push it. It works. They may have thought about this. So go. Ah! There we go. So do we have to do a really long like? Ah! Oh, that was pretty good. That's, Thank you. that's astonishingly good. All right. I've got the power. Oh. Oh. You do have the power. And I'm knocked into a corner. This will be fun. Ha! <laughs> oh! No. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, YouTube. Oh, oh. oh God. Are people okay. working next door? Probably. Probably yes. <laughs> They're wondering what you're shouting as well. Oh. Oh. It's volume as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, Jesus. We should have, we should have calibrated this higher. My bad. Go. Ah! Maybe we should go. Yeah, let's 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 do that before we <laughs> before people come around. So if if they did do this genuinely just to screw with us, I, I'm working. genuinely impressed. Um. Okay. So it looks like if we start on mic calibration, maybe it's just the tutorial levels. Let's start on tutorial two and see if this is. See what happens. See what happens. Well, uh, any of these uh, look more promising. The all right. Mic calibration. Let's. So just just bump it all. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, and that, that way, seems... even talking will do it. That's fine. So we were in the expo. Very basically, awesome. there was so much background chatter; yeah, it was like it was constantly on, and actually, it was still kind of playable. So you uh, can talk to it, and there you go. That's better. That's okay. better. That's a nice little effect when that goes from 
Yeah, less, well. less shakes oh, screaming. The, 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 the lights, lights are right. fixed as well. Right? Nice unity was still baking. Okay, Ta da! Oh. oh no! Sorry, oh, I can get that's... in the hole. I can get in the hole. It's okay. Boop! 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 Should we just sing at it? Yeah, go on. What do you want to sing? Ba ba black sheep. Have you any wool? There you go. Let's, let's not subject them to that. Yeah, I know. Um, Fus! Roda! <laughs> let's see, that's really useless. <laughs> no, Dave, you made my block. There you you're, go. You're, well, that's worked, that's worked. You're, there we go. You're, just... you're herding the blocks. No, yeah. Hang on, I think the best thing we found so far is Dave being indignant. So is if it, you just. There you go, there you go. It's like done. You... Come by, come by. A nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Right, don't knock those no, over, for it... God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, stop it. And restart works now. Oh. Right. Okay. Quiet. Okay. Oh, oh, no. So, are you getting yeah. that ball into there and that ball into there? All right. Yeah. Also, I think the blocks have to go in that hole. Oh, really? Right. So let's do the bars first. Ta da! There you go. La 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 la. No, come gently, back. Gently, gently. So, it's interesting the difficulty goes up quite a lot by just making the shapes round. Yes. Yeah. It's quite fun, isn't it? I also like the fact they've noticed that. Oh, I can, I can push the balls. Ah, the uh, balls are pushable. That's a bit of a shame that they don't have like physics, physics off or the mass or something crazy. Yeah. You realise as soon as we listen to this back, we won't be able to hear anyone speaking. Oh, it'll be fine. Alright. And now... We do it. So I think if you look oh, down another. that hole... There you go. Yeah, and that's for the... All of them have got to go in. Oh, this is going to be good. Go on, Dave. Oh. Oh! oh. How are we? How in a million years are we going to review this? Uh, no idea. Let's do this one, and then we'll try. Well, let's it's one of those games we can play it with our review. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the presentation. <laughs> presentation. There you are, marvelous. Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the visuals? <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Shall we actually right, go through yeah. it? <laughs> we <laughs> can try. <laughs> Speak loudly so I can actually finish it. So, so before we do, it's one one thing I wanted to say was that, and I, and I mentioned this in the expo, but <laughs> more loudly. So, one of the things I wanted to say was that um, we had a couple of games in the past that have done microphone type stuff, and one of the problems with it is that the it's very very um, the sensitivity is not good. Right, mm -hmm. um, and it is really difficult to build a control scheme around it. Oh, what, what I like okay. about this game is that they have made that a feature of the game. Yes, right. It's just... it's, it's a fun game because it's because noisy it's, yeah. and difficult, and you have to make stupid noises and shout at the thing. And sometimes it does what you want. And, and they've turned a they've turned a limitation into a strength. And actually, as a kind of a, a sort of a party game, it works really well. I do um, kind of want to see you with the sheepdogs now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's really disobedient sheepdogs as well. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, presentation then. So, uh, what do we think? Um, so well, there's some nice things here. I think they, the use of the use of the bold colours and the, the monochrome backdrops, that's really good. It's very clear where everything needs to be. You've got yeah. the feedback when like the talking is loud enough. Yeah, as well. yeah. Sorry, you mean the bold colours? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. All right. Um, and even like the use of the lights, uh, coloured lights, and the you know, so so you know, you know what are areas, you know what are things, you know how they match up. Um, uh, it's yeah. it's pretty good. You go, no, you put them in the corner, Dave. Too much. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's some there's some sound when you when the thing sort of switches. I guess. Yep. Sound. That's the thing. You don't actually want too much sound in this game because you're just no. kind of yelling over it anyway. It, maybe a little bit would be nice sort of when when you've got one of these in the correct location. Yeah, you want to have a, like a tada or a fan. Tada! Thank you. That's it. Just like that. Um, so and um, so information. I mean, really, it's done through through colours and it's done diagetically. Well, oh, the, there was a little scene. sound there. Did you have the sound? Um, oh, was it? Okay. Let's let's listen to the sound. And, and there's the limited information that is on screen, like the like the press R to restart and the timer and things that they, they kind of go. Yeah, there was higher, higher. Oh god, so too high. Would you say key information is shown, consistent graphics and some audio, or information is shown clearly, consistent graphics and appropriate use of audio? Um, it's difficult because, like you said, the too much audio would actually well, be it, it, it would not be appropriate in this case, right? Um, so there we go. They've got an appropriate use of audio, which is to say minimal. 
Yes, I, th I think that's probably right. Yeah. Da 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 da. Um, hey. So I mean, whether so that's the, that's the good level, right? So I, I think I think it is good. I think it yeah, definitely is there. So the information of where you need to get each block is like pretty clear. Just yeah. Like into, like you say, I mean, I I'd almost be tempted to push them up a bit, you know, just just because just because they they've used the simple they've used that simple color scheme really effectively in the game to tell you where things go and what to do. If if I was yeah. going to nitpick, I'd yeah. have to say that it would just be nice if these had borders so you could. I they have, didn't become one amorphous blob. I almost have a feeling that might be te a texture issue rather than. Also, I quite like them without. I'll be honest. It's, it's just so I can to see. One. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree aesthetically it works without, but I just think functionally it would benefit okay. from having some distinction between them. Do you, should we say good or? Do you should we say good loudly so I can finish <laughs> the? <laughs> what, like, good. Oh, so you're, you're, you're right. Let's go for the good. Let's okay. go for the good. Um, so gameplay. Gameplay. Um, a set of complementary mechanics, so good would be a set of complementary mechanics and smooth, usable controls and meaningful play. So here's the thing, like, the controls are deliberately awkward. Yes. Um, and, and also kind of, we, we, we kind of get to that a bit later on, I think. So so maybe we should focus on the mechanics and the meaningful play here. Okay. Um, like, so, as, a, as a puzzle game, like, it's all laid out quite nicely. You've got, you, know, you get the things yeah. in place, but it, I guess mostly... It's sort of based around where the starting position of each object. So, for example, the first yeah. level is just get get the box in the. In, yeah. It's in quite the, a nice uh -huh. little tutorial thing, isn't it? But yeah. then the second one is you have to get two boxes past each other. Yeah. So you're already yeah. sort of being forced to to sort of think about how you're going to move stuff. Around so you've got so you've got um, the different layouts. You've got the shapes. You've got the way that the shapes <laughs> behave differently, dynamically. Um, so I do feel like we're still sort of in the tutorial novelty phase of it, just with. So I've introduced a new shape now. Bit, just... I, I, I think that might be a yeah, maybe a so, fundamental so this is, problem this is, with this, this type is level of game. one. So I tell you, do you want to quit out and just like go to level two just so we can? I just, I think we can do this level. We just need to. I can't be loud because yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So so just, just if, if we just speak really close to this for a second, we should be okay. Sorry for everyone. Go on in the hole. Oh god. Did we have one at the beginning of this that it may contain shouting? Oh, we might have to add that after this. <laughs> this may be loud. Oh, oh no. Oh, one in the corner. It's not good. Get out of the corner! No, in the hall! Not quite so hard. In the hall. <laughs> very noisy. In the hall. Hall! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. right, Gently one. in the hole. That's it. Just a, one more. A little bit more. I've got a plan. Oh, way off. Just a little bit more. Whistle. 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 Yeah. Whistle. In. Go on. In. Go on. Yes. All right. All right. Nice. That took about five minutes. I quite like the little time in the so, top left. So this is the thing, right? Like, yeah, game, game no, we don't have any. They're obviously doing pretty well. Uh, um, okay, so this is an. Ah, so there's they, a wall of blocks. Can we go destroy the wall of blocks? I like the fact before we went further. They've just been adding a new element to the puzzle every level. Yeah, no, they've got a nice, nice way of bringing so it. So is this front one? Foos Roda. That was actually quite good. That was, right. Okay. Right. So, so gameplay wise. So what's going on in here then? Because you've got these kind like of pulsing. Which is nice because it shows you that they're like breakable. I think it's just the physics objects sort of being a bit jiggly rather than the thing they yeah. necessarily put in on purpose, but it works. You, you kind of feel like the big bad wolf playing this. Oh, yeah. you've broken it with your voice. But what are we doing here? You're huff not and we'll puff and we'll blow the blocks down. So you just, oh, you literally just have to blow them into the. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually know where the end of the level is now. I think it might be down there. Have I screwed this up? No, no I think you need uh, to do the other ones as blue, well. Blue, green. What color was the block in there? Is it red? Is there one behind you? Oh, there's one there. And I can't see the red block anymore. <laughs> well, no, that's the exit, isn't it? Oh, there's, there's a red in there, and I don't know how to get the... Let's just restart the level and hope the lights come up. Uh, this is going to be a problem, isn't it? Probably. Should we... Hey, okay, yes. so let's talk about the... So, 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 yeah, so, we're, so, we're still on gameplay. Um, set of complementary mechanics, smooth, usable controls, meaningful... Gameplay. Play. I think they've achieved that. That's the yeah. good. Yep, yeah, so yeah. definitely good. So excellent would be a wide set of complementary mechanics and intuitive and smooth, usable controls and enjoyable and meaningful play. So I take your point about the controls and you said we kind of had to, had to exclude them anyway slightly. Mm -hmm. um, 
but uh, so in terms of the mechanics, they, I mean, they're they're relatively simple, but they yeah. combine in really interesting ways. It's, it's the way they put the they designed the levels, and it's so yeah. almost every game we've seen. In fact, every game we've seen so far has been procedural generation. So now yeah. we get to see some like authored levels with an innovation, which is yes. really nice. Um, the red block? I mean, I I a little bit simple. So maybe between good and excellent. I think that's right. I, I think it's it's. Uh, uh, and lastly, bugs. So this lighting bug is mildly frustrating. There that, we go. That's the problem with Unity, not the. Be gone! Oh no, is the mic calibration messed up now? Probably, but fine. Go! go. That works. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, certainly, you know certainly when this was demoed in the in the in the lab, it was uh, it, it looked like it does here. So. Foos. <laughs> So this is much what, better. So what do you do with that, though? You've, ah, oh, oh. So now we can see the hole. Yes. To the hole! Yeah. Oh, cool. There we go. And we got one more to do. Yeah. If you do nothing... Greenery! If you do nothing else with your life, Callum, there will be a legacy of YouTube of you just shouting hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change the pit, I think, just for the... <laughs> please don't clip this video. In the pit. Pit! Oh, for God's sake. Can someone just shout into the microphone for a second? <laughs> no! Oh! oh. oh. Your, your whole thing is working. <laughs> oh dear, I'm done. Go! Be gone, foul cube! <laughs> in, Move! In! Further! Further! Yes! Alright, we go. can finally finish right. this goddamn world. Um, whoever's trying to watch this to get their mark is going to be... I know. Yeah. They've done it on purpose. They deserve everything they get. Can, so can we point out I've been tacitly avoiding shouting profanity into the microphone? <laughs> you've, you've done a good job so far. Um, Thank you. Uh, so, bugs. Uh, right, right. We still... Is it, is it, yeah, bugs, yeah. So, so that's I, a bug. I, I kind but of... It's fine. Um, yeah, I think that's because... Because okay. we're sort of jumping between levels manually. I think that's okay, yeah. So, I think we give them something this one. for that. So, uh... Good would be minor bugs, um, and these are uh, and the uncommon, and, and excellent would be no bugs, despite the complexity of the game, and the complexity yeah. is the one that's important, right? So do so, you think this is complex enough to warrant an, an excellent? Well, it's... Especially given that we just talk, we're talking about the gameplay and we put it between good and excellent for that. Yeah. Considering the only real bug we've noticed when I've not been messing around the levels is the lighting. Again, I think that's Unity. I, yeah. I think it's very reasonable that actually this is... Considering they've decided so to go for I, a novel interface as well. I, I think it comes down to the complexity. How complex do you think it is? At this level of complexity, would we have expected there to be some bugs in this game? I, I, I'd have expected the microphone to have messed up more, actually. I think it's been very reasonable with volume and... Yeah, I mean, it's... it's it, I, mean, I, I, think, I think the problem with the reason we're struggling is because they've, got, they've actually got very simple elements. Yeah. But they've put them together really cleverly. To create complexity. To complete, mm. and, and, and that's exactly what they should do, right? That's a really good piece of advice for, for anyone doing mm. this type of game where you have very limited development time. It's like, you know, we, and we've said it in some of the previous videos, you, know, you, you, you create a set of mechanics and then the interesting stuff comes out of their interaction, right? You don't have to add in new things. You, combinations of old things work, and that's what they're doing here. So the problem is, is that those simple elements, you might expect them to get working, right? Mm -hmm. um, because they are simple, but then as a whole, the effect is is greater than the sum of its parts. All right. So, so let's, let's say it's excellent. Uh, yeah, I, I I think so. I think kind of. Um, Can I finally shout at the cube? Go on. Then. Move cube. Oh god. Are you sure this is a movable cube? Yeah, you have to jump on it. I, I'm just sorry. I'm just gonna have to shout into the microphone for a, a period of time. Sorry. Cube! There you go. Wow. Too far. Nah, I'll do. Get on there. Oh wow. Ah. Got it. So again, sort of using these cubes in different ways, not just having yeah. to. Okay. So no. So that's. The, but again, that's exactly what we were talking about, right? So the actual mechanic is is no different than the previous one. But just, but just varying the size of the cube and where you need to place it. In see, the level. and then they've I'm iterated using, on it I'm here using, as well. I'm using it as a thing you have to jump on. So now this, it's a, this now is, it's this a thing is, you've got to jump on. This and is starting the... to be very nice, actually. All right, so be gone. So okay, so yeah, I uh, think we, we agree with excellent for the bugs, right? So it's obviously a novel interface. They've tested it. 
Yep. Um, so how do they how do they do it? So in a typical game where the user can interact with physics objects, the input can be presented to the user. Um, for example, a power meter in a golf game. I think I want to see a golf game where you shout at the ball now. <laughs> Pretty sure that exists. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, using this interface, the user has direct control over the input, so it's not possible to pre-represent the power or effort of that input as due to the analog system. The input is processed in real time. Okay. That's not really talking about how it's affecting your game or the way in which it's played. Um, in fact, to visualize... So they chose to visualize the input with the particle yeah. effect, but... Yeah, that's really all they sort of talk about with why they use it, okay. which is a little bit of a shame there. Um, so they talk about how it enhances the gameplay, but we'll get onto that when we talk about so, the design. So, so um, what was the sort of good level for? Because intuitively, I think I think they've done a pretty good job. Yeah. So good um, for a novel interface would be a usable novel interface of some complexity. For example, there are appropriate controls and some mechanisms in place to deal with any problems around information, display, movement, or. So I think in terms of just getting the input and turning it into some sensible sensible action in the game, they've, they've done a good job. They've also got the sensible calibration at the start. Yeah. That's so true. that we don't have to shout loudly at cubes! Um, the interesting um, thing is, the, the effective mechanisms to the deal with... You're pushing it. So, okay. so the effective mechanisms to stop any um, problems is interesting, because the mechanism that they've chosen to stop to stop the problem is the fact that you don't need to have fine fine control yeah right? uh -huh. um, so they've not they've not addressed it technically but they've addressed it with design you need to give that another show so yeah I just need to shout loudly at this cube oh, yeah. it's got like infinite right. friction to stop pushing it I think. Oh, Jesus and I need to move the other cube so uh, so so a step higher excellent would be a complex novel interface that works well blah 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 I'm not sure it's not a hugely complex interface. It's, it is just us hollering at the microphone. Like it's effective, yes. but it's not complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we can do good for this. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. And then I think we're. You mean they got it? Go! Right, <laughs> oh my uh, god! Yeah. I'm trying uh, to yeah. level. So the Sorry, bit guys. the bit where they have done really well is on the meaningfulness. <sighs> Um, right. So, that's how, so the good for the meaningfulness, for example, would be uh, effective design that takes advantage of the innovation, where innovation adds to the gameplay and limitations are minimized. And I think it it absolutely meets that. Yes. Excellent would be sophisticated design that makes good advantage of the innovation, where the innovation clearly adds to the gameplay and any limitations are carefully avoided. So, so put mm -hmm. it this way: if this game didn't have this shout control, and what you had to do was to, I mean, tap the just, mouse button, just kick the, yeah, yeah. This this would this not only would this be worse, it would be I think barely, no, barely a game. Bare, you know, not, not a particularly exciting puzzle or game, right? Mm -hmm. What what makes it is the is the social interaction around the hollering at the at the microphone just trying to get these things to work. And also like you say, the design decision they take in to make sure the fact that the controls aren't fine grained is yes. a problem. Yeah, M making yeah, like a a feature not a bug, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's really nice. Um, so would you say this hits excellent? So the excellent, what was that? The uh, sophisticated, sophisticated design, good advantage of the innovation, clearly adds to the gameplay, and any limitations are clearly I think it, I think it does. Mm. What, 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 just for the, what is the prize worthy yeah. So a sophisticated game in which the innovation makes the gameplay possible, and any limitations are avoided by seamlessly integrating them into the gameplay. Actually, now I say it. Yeah, this is gameplay that, that is made possible by, um, as we say, the limitations and, are... And they're in there. I think, I and it's integrated into the gameplay. The, I, the I, thing is, yeah. they've given some thought as a level design as well as to how that plays out with the with the yeah. control scheme. So yeah. things like putting cubes directly in front of here while you're getting started. I, I, I mean, we, we're naturally reticent to give the highest level of, 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 of category, but I think in this case, I think this is a, I think they've done a prize worthy job. In it's terms got the, of, all the hallmarks of a good puzzle game. Yeah. All right. Uh, making it meaningful. So what do they say for their feedback? So uh, feedback. In the lab, we received feedback uh, on using the volume of the microphone input and using the pitch of the microphone input. We thought the volume was easy to control for most people, so we decided to push that idea and not use the pitch of the input. Probably wise. Sensible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> feedback is also uh, given to caution the use of the microphone as different computer setups, microphones, or players will have different responses to the okay. same volume. Uh, this was addressed by including the calibration scheme, which I think yeah, dramatically, dramatically. Probably makes a yes, difference. Yeah. Um, uh, which allows yeah. players 
to um, play the same game regardless of hardware position. So, so those are technical fees, but I, I'm almost, I almost wish they'd said a bit more about the design, because I think they've done such a lovely job in the design. It'd be nice to know how that evolved a little bit. But um, yeah, that, that's good technical feedback. Um, it was, uh, uh, so feedback was clearly articulated, appropriate and effective changes have been made. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I think that's that's the excellent. That is, that is excellent. Yeah. As, as a bit of an aside, I would love to see them, if they chose to continue this game, incorporate pitch into the mechanics. For example, if you could hold a specific pitch, using it to control, say, the height of an object or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my experience with pitch-based games is that they are, they are so hard to get right. Because people just erupt. The people are just really bad at it. Yeah. Um, and the game is quite bad at it. Well, the system is quite good at detecting it. So what I like about this is they go with this... We've got this, you know, they haven't got these like fine tools which let you do tight control. They've, they've got a ruddy great hammer, right? Mm -hmm. And they've designed the game for so a ruddy you, great hammer. Yeah, it's yeah. true. A massive brick wall to demolish with your hammer. Yeah, and and, and perfect, you know. And, and have a good laugh at you shouting hole at the microphone <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is good. Really nice job. So that is uh, yeah. our last game for this batch. So thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.